Hello, everyone. My name is Manika Sampath, and I'm going to be talking to you today about IBM Watson, um, and specifically their Conversation API. So what is Watson? Well, in their words, it is a cognitive technology that can think like a human. Um, it is available as a set of open APIs, um, and it can do a lot of really cool things, such as uh, sorry, uh, to converting speech to text, text to speech, uh, picking out colors from an image, or even telling you how you feel based on your text input. So let's talk about Watson being used by businesses in the real world. Um, well, there are a few examples. Uh, the first being concierge services. So. Hilton actually um, is using the Conversation API along with a few other Watson APIs um, in the form of a robot that actually acts as a hotel concierge. Uh, there is a prototype of this in a hotel in Virginia and people ask it where to go for dinner, where to take in a show, um, hot spots around the city, etc. cetera. Um, it also is used in the legal industry. Uh, there is a, an app uh, known as Ross Intelligence that actually uh, searches the web for rel uh, relevant precedents and case law, saving uh, legal firms lots of time and money uh, that they would otherwise be spending on associates doing that work. It's also used uh, in medical, uh, financial, and even to predict crimes where, where they'll happen and when they'll happen. Uh, so, in their words, IBM Watson Conversation Service combines machine learning, which we've learned about, natural language understanding, another of their APIs, and integrated dialogue tools to create conversational flows between your apps and your users. Um, in essence, the Watson Conversation API allows you to easily build a bot or virtual agent that can be deployed on mobile devices, messaging platforms, or even in a physical robot, as we've seen. Uh, this is how it works. You have an interface, you have your own application, uh, and then your application sends data back and forth with Watson's Conversation API, as well as any of their other APIs. And you are also able to use any backend systems in the meantime. So how do you get started using the Conversation API? Well, you need to install Watson. You need a Bluemix account, which is basically their cloud. Uh, then you log in and launch the conversation tool, and the rest is pretty easy. You build your workspace, and this is where you create the input-output logic for uh, what you're going to say and what it's going to say back to you. Finally, connect to your app, and all you really need for that are a few credentials and a URL. So if you were to do this in your terminal, it would look something like this. Um, let's say you didn't even have, uh, you weren't going to do it in a browser or a mobile app, or a messaging platform, you just wanted to speak back and forth with your terminal via node, um, you would just require in conversation, um, and you have this simple function, and you would plug in your credentials, and it is that simple. However, if you are doing it in an app, you are going to need a few more files beyond the original file, including a server file, um, static files, um, an ENV file, which is for security, so that you're not actually looking um, at passwords and usernames in your app.js um, or index.js, and um, also a set of other JS files that will allow you to modify uh, Watson's conversation logic to make it even cooler than it already is. Um, so writing a dialogue, intents, entities, and dialogue. So the three things you need to work with when you are working with your workspace is uh, these three things, intents, which are denoted by a hashtag, for example, weather, um, and you would basically list as values any strings that the user might say um, to get some information on the weather. And you don't have to list everything exactly syntactically. Um, that's where their natural language understanding comes into play and kind of guesses for you. Um, so you could ask a question about business locations or a bill payment. Um, intents are denoted again with hashtags. Entities. Uh, are nouns, people, places, or things, objects. Um, and entities are always indicated with the at sign. So let's say I wanted to know the weather, but I wanted to know specifically what the weather conditions were like in Philadelphia. So I might say, what is the weather? And they would ask me in return, where are you located, or weather where? And I might say Philly, 
So with entities, you can actually provide synonyms for these values. So even if I didn't say Philadelphia specifically, I might say something similar and Watsu would be able to understand that that's what I want. Finally, your dialogue is where you bring intents and entities into play as triggers and decide on what kind of output to spit back out. Um, and your dialogue is actually built uh, with nodes, so it is somewhat like a tree, and Watson will actually track each node that you've visited along the way. So Watson Conversation makes chatbots. These are just a few examples of what chatbots might look like, or two examples. But we can also see it in a web browser in a moment. So obviously, you know, it can be rendered as a messaging platform in a browser or in a physical component, such as a robot. So let's see it in action. Um, I created a node on my dialog tree, uh, which I have called Make Sandwich. Um, and I want to be able to ask my robot to make me a sandwich. I want to say I'm hungry and I want it to make me a sandwich. So my trigger is the intent Make Sandwich. Um, and then my response condition, uh, I'm sorry, no response condition, but my response that I want from Watson is the exact string, okay, I'll make you a sandwich, would you like that on whole wheat, white, or rye bread? On the back end, if I were to click on the ellipses there on the top right of that responses, it would show me this. So it is an output object, uh, sorry, a response object with um, output as one of the properties, and within that we have text values. That's where the string comes in. And you'll see the selection policy as sequential, which I will get into in a moment. Um, so if I were to show you, just for a moment, how that works. This is my dialogue tree here. And this is a little chatbot that I made. And I called her Sassy Bot because originally I gave her some very sassy responses. But she's been since cleaned up a little bit. Um, so I'll say, hello. She says, hiya. And I'll say, I'm hungry. Spelled correctly. Uh, okay, I'll make you a sandwich. So, okay, maybe I want whole wheat and I want a turkey sandwich, turkey and cheese. Okay, you want a turkey and cheese sandwich. When would you like that? Now. Sorry, I have to return some videotapes now. I'll try me again never. She hasn't lost all of this ass. Okay, so. But let's see how that actually worked. Oops. There we go. All right, so we have intents and entities. Um, so here is our make sandwich intent. Um, and in here we can add new user examples. And even as we go through um, our chat as we're testing it as admins, we can continue to say, uh, if we say something and we mean make a sandwich and it says irrelevant, we can say, no, that wasn't irrelevant. I mean make a sandwich. Um, entities, again, your objects. So here I've defined sandwich types as well as bread types. Um, and uh, we also, I'm sorry, it's a bit small, but uh, you can look at a, a closer up view. You can provide synonyms for those entities, and here I've done exactly that. Even if I don't spell like PB and J in any of these four ways, um, it will still understand via natural language understanding. Finally, we have access to system entities, which is how Watson knew that when I said now, they were going to say, I'm returning videotapes now. No matter wh what time it was, she was always going to be returning videotapes. OK. Uh, so here is my dialogue path. Um, just to give you a, a look at what the actual workspace looks like. Um, so I've got four nodes um, for this make sandwich path. Um, and as you can see, uh, it's being triggered by the intent in the first node, but in the second node, um, it's being triggered by the entity, and then the responses are conditional on the values of that entity. Um, so written as at sign, bread, colon, and then the value name. Um, in the third node, uh, I am not using conditions on the responses, but I am using the context that's passed in. Uh, and the context, uh, within the context that I input, the entity is sandwich type. 
And so I can say in the result, OK, you want a at sandwich type sandwich, like a virtual field. Um, and they would pass back the value that I passed to it. And finally, in the fourth node, system time, that is just a, a system entity that Watson comes with. So uh, now that you know how Watson basically works, uh, as at least the conversation API, um, let's talk about some best practices when you are creating a chatbot. Um, so you want to always start off right, um, set the tone of what the user can expect from you. Um, you can add more conditions to the conversation start nodes um, if you want to have different introductions depending on some external factor like the time of day, good morning, good afternoon, good night, etc. cetera. Um, don't repeat yourself. Um, what's more annoying than being greeted the same way multiple times every time you say hello, they're like, sup, 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 you know. Hi, hey there, what's going on, et cetera. And that's where the selection policy uh, property comes into play. So you just switch that to random. Finally, inject some personality. Maybe not as much as I did, but you know, make it fun. The user knows it's not human, but it's always fun to make it a little, a little playful. Um, and finally, uh, use structured input when possible, because as a, as a user, I might not know that what I'm writing is going to generate the proper response. Maybe I'll spell something wrong. It's always easier to give, you know, a button, uh, two buttons or something as, as options instead of having to write a string of text. Um, so do that when applicable. Otherwise, Watson is smart enough to know um, to handle variations in strings. Finally, uh, review, revise, repeat. If someone, um, as an admin, you can see who's using Watson, how they're using it, and what's irrelevant. If something is repeatedly irrelevant, this girl really wants a haircut. Your chatbot can't handle that. So maybe it's time to either revise the uh, start node of your chatbot um, or add some logic to handle scheduling a haircut appointment. Final thoughts. Um, Watson is not the only player in cognitive AI. Microsoft um, and Google are also in the game, and everyone's improving these technologies all the time. There are many different APIs, a lot of crossover. Um, but I only showed you one API, which is this chatbot feature. Um, when you start combining this feature with speech to text, with um, scouring the web for information or visual recognition, um, the possibilities are endless. I hope you enjoyed this.